Welcome to Confirmation Bias, presented by the League Ambassadors. I'm Ambassador Kenny Ken Ken, and if you need a reason to tune in to this year's NHL playoffs, I'll give you three. Mr. Game 7, a duck killer, and the new sheriff in town <laughs> in Memphis. Well, actually, it's Nashville. That's my confirmation. <laughs> 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 I'm Ambassador Junior Blue, uh. and I don't agree with Charles Barkley much, but he's right. The NHL playoffs are better than the NBA playoffs, and that's my confirmation bias. I'm Ambassador Dad, and of course, the NHL team in Nashville, Tennessee has a brother leading the way. Of course, and that's my <laughs> confirmation bias. I have no idea what the fuck they are talking about. <laughs> that's my confirmation bias. I'm Ambassador Chef Kerr, and I'll say this. If the Capitals lose this Game 7 tomorrow, they should be relegated out of the NHL play <laughs> forever. And that's my confirmation by it. Welcome to Confirmation Bias, presented by the League Ambassadors. Uh, as a reminder, you can follow us everywhere on social media. Uh, our handle is at the League AM. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Please visit our YouTube channel, uh, League Ambassadors. Uh, I've got a lot of content on there for you. Uh, as a reminder, if you are watching us through our live feed, uh, Diplomatic Immunity is a segment that we will have at the end of this show where we will attempt to answer a few of your questions or, or respond to some comments that are out there. So please feel free, flood the message board with questions, and, uh, and we'll get to that at the end of the show. Also, visit our website, theleagueam.com. In particular, if you are a diehard sports fan, uh, we have a spot on our website called Diplomatic Immunity where you can post uh, any write-up that you may have expressing whatever feelings, emotions uh, about your team, uh, please go ahead and hit us up on Diplomatic Community. Uh, let's get the show going today. We're going to start with our hot topic, which this week takes us into the land of <laughs> hockey. And if you couldn't tell by my confirmation bias, this ought to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we want to talk about the NHL where unlike the NBA playoffs, the second round of the NHL hockey playoffs have been both exciting and competitive. Uh, NBA can't spell competitive right now. No, they cannot. <laughs> they cannot. Uh, so first we have the Nashville Predators um, who actually have forced the CMT Awards, which is country music. To <laughs> think think AMAs and, and MTV Awards. They have forced them to find a new home because mm -hmm. out of the blue, they're going to the conference finals for the first time in franchise history. Yeah. Uh, unexpected two success. two ice rinks total <laughs> in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, first of all, you know, shout out to Mr. P.K. Subbin. 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 Mm. He looked that up, folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's leading the defensive play. But what's, what's, what has been the catalyst for the Predators run here, guys? Um, basically, uh, they've built themselves around a solid core of players that were outcast from other bigger teams. Mm -hmm. And basically uh, took like a lot of B players and, and made a very, very solid team wow. uh, to where they can build on and, and have success. So there's no... Like super superstars on the team, but everybody's good 
right. a lot of different things. They've also had a very significant home ice advantage. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to watch more than one game here in the playoffs, but that Nashville arena gets crunk. And I want the camera to go to Kevin's face <laughs> right now. Because <laughs> as soon as I said watch more than one game, <laughs> um, the Predators are waiting for the winner. Uh, of one of two game sevens that are going to happen. And this is why this is interesting. And it seems like it happens every every spring. The NHL playoffs really are just compelling. And yeah. so you have, uh, they're waiting for the winner of the Ducks versus the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. Uh, the Oilers jumped out to a 2-0 lead. The Ducks have battled back. Um, Edmonton's been led by their star, Connor McDavid. Um, and, and you've got a veteran Ducks team that now they're going into game seven. After getting throttled two days ago, right. losing seven to one to Edmonton, and they're uh, they're having trouble on two fronts. One, they've got a duck killer, uh, a Leon Drysittle, Leon <laughs> Drysittle in eleven games in eleven games this season against the Ducks. So that's regular season and postseason. He's got eleven goals. Mm-hmm. And he's been a problem for them. But for the Ducks, this is turning into a little bit of deja vu because yeah. they're coming into a, another Game 7. Yeah. They had a chance to close out the series. They didn't do it 2013. And now here we are, same situation. Actually, the last four years, they've been up three games to two. Wow. And lost in Game 7. So they got to get that monkey off their back. It's it's mental for them, really. Yeah. It sounds like another team. It sounds like another team, you know, <laughs> huh, Kevin? <laughs> I can speak on that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, uh, they, they did get throttled, but the series has been super even. There's yeah. been, all of them have been close with the exception of Game two six. blowouts. But right. one team blew one team out and the, you know, conversely the other way. Right. So they're on even, even footing. So uh, Game 7s are definitely going to be off the chain. What do you or, see happening? Uh, I mean, it's hard for, uh, the, the Ducks don't die. Um, even though they've been in this situation, and like, like Lester said, they have, they've they come up short. Um, to be honest, uh, I don't even know if home ice matters at this point. Right. Um, you're there. You got the game there. You, you got to take advantage of it. I mean, yeah. the um, uh, the Oilers are, are, are faster, younger. They're younger. That's the thing. I yeah. wonder if this is More a situation agility. where the Game 7, the pressure of the Game 7 gets to the young team and the veteran hungry ducks that want to get this they want to shed this reputation it's get it cra- off their back it's crazy i read that only in game sevens in nhl playoffs it's only a 58 percent advantage for the home, home team, team. Yeah. really so that's crazy compared to i think it's 78 in the nba mm-hmm. so i mean it's really not home ice doesn't mean much on the other side of the bracket we've got the other game seven um kevin washington capitals your capitals versus the pittsburgh penguins I actually watched this game yesterday, yeah. folks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what, I, cha- what channel was it on? It was on NBC Sports. Yeah. Oh, channel 220 okay. if you have Direct TV. Uh, if you got Sling TV, NBC SN. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Sling, come holler at us. Um, and Kevin, I got to tell you, man, the physicality of the Capitals is impressive. And, and this really has been a series theme, in fact. They have been really beating the shit out of Pittsburgh. <laughs> And they're hoping that, you know, it catches up to them in a game seven. How do you feel about it? Well, I have to correct you before I go any further. These are not my caps. (laughs) (laughs) It just happened to be the closest hockey team to where I live. All right. Fair enough. I'll I'll own them for the night if it it helps our our show. (laughs) Um, But, no, to your point, I definitely think their physicality is starting to wear on on Pittsburgh. I mean, you see that early in the series, the the Penguins look sharp. It looked like the caps were going to fold just like they always do. Um, but within the last few games, the Caps have found that groove on offense. Specifically, in the third period of Game 5, they kind of hit that groove to where they got it going, and you've seen them just explode in Game 6. So I think this is the time. I mean, they got their <laughs> opponent on the ropes. They got the Penguins where they want them. They just got to finish them off. The Mo- game- Go ahead. I was going to say, the games, I mean, they were super aggressive last night, but they've been really aggressive all series to me. I just think mm-hmm. they, they haven't taken advantage of their opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um now, what is aggressive? Is it like they skate faster? So they skate harder. faster. <laughs> they run you into the board. Uh, a lot That's of shot right. attempts. It's, it's legal to fight in hockey. Yeah. That's right. We're going to get to that. Foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah. Foreshadowing. I think they also have uh, the, 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 the big sort of spade card, and that is Mr. Justin Williams, whose nickname is literally 
Game 7. Mr. <laughs> game 7. Uh, Omar, tell us about Justin Williams. What do you know about Justin Williams? Not a goddamn. <laughs> I don't know what he look like. I don't know how tall he is. I don't know if he's a midget. All I know is he can put on skates. <laughs> and that's just because you told me just now. <laughs> I what, what icing. You, what, <laughs> oh, oh, ta- tag me. Oh, what, <laughs> tag your what man. I, <laughs> what I have read, though, is uh, Mr. Williams. They call him Mr. Game 7, but in his Game 7s that he's played in, he has seven goals. That's right. Seven assists, and he's 7-0. Mm. So I think, I mean, what more excuses do they need, man? They, <laughs> they got everything in their corner. Can- I, I, what, uh, when, when Devin mentioned shots on goals uh, for the series, the Penguin, the, I'm sorry, in the six games they played, the Caps have outshot them 200 to 134. So just like any other sport, you get more more shots, more attempts to score. You're eventually going to score more. Kev, what do you think about uh, the dominance last night? Giving up those last two late goals heading into Game 7, does that give the Penguins any hope, or was that just super whatever because we, you know, we got this? Yeah, you. it's funny. You mentioned that in the chat, and I'm like, dang, he might be right. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping – I'm hoping that momentum swing doesn't happen for uh, for the Penguins like it did for the Caps in, in Game Five, but because Pittsburgh can score so quickly, I, I think it's some it's it's a positive for them to carry into it. But the fact that they're underhanded, they're missing um, Chris Letang, Trevor Daly on the defensive end, and the Caps are just wearing them out offensively. Yeah. I don't think it'll it'll. And Crosby's it'll brain ain't all the way back. <laughs> yeah, right. oft, oft, yeah, oftentimes in hockey games too, there's all you know you can't really give too much credence to the. Um, to any late goals like that because they usually will pull the goalie and then there's a man advantage and so you know often I mean it happened tonight even in the game with Ottawa and the and the New York Rangers um I th- I think the physicality is I think it's going to continue I think it's been a steady progression yeah. I'm surprised that Sidney Crosby got cleared to even come back in the game <laughs> last not, night that shit would not work hey, in the um, NFL yeah Kev did they make a big deal out of Ovechkin <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hey. Golf clap. Golf clap. <laughs> getting um put down the third to the third line um he's the star of the team he's the you know face of the franchise and basically that's like putting steph curry on the bench you know what i from what i heard is at least on talk radio just around the area people initially were like you know of course you'd be taken aback when a star goes to the third line like you said but it worked out in their favor it, it's right. almost like that you know it's an x factor it's something that the other team didn't expect and for whatever reason whether you criticize it or not i can't because i don't know enough about the sport but if it worked <laughs> stick to it yeah because yeah. they were down three one and then won the next two after one, they moved into the third it's line. impressive was he playing back. bad or they just decided to make a change he no was he was playing bad he was yeah. silent he was playing bad mm. he was silent um now um something that i found interesting is that both of these game sevens the away team jumped out 2-0 mm-hmm and now we're heading into Game Seven, which which means there's a lot of winning on someone else's uh, rink. Yep. Um, the winner of that Game Seven, Washington and Pittsburgh, will then play. And it just finished a few minutes ago. Uh, the Ottawa Senators, who dusted off the New York Rangers, finished that series four to two. In fact, won the game tonight four to two. Uh, Omar, what do you have about uh, about the Ottawa Senators? What should these teams, Washington and Pittsburgh, be looking out for? Does Canada Canada um elect senators? <laughs> <laughs> they were a parliament. <laughs> they should be looking out for Jean Gabriel Pajot, who uh, Pajot is leading uh, the uh, NHL hockey playoffs in scoring. Actually, he had another uh, another goal uh, this evening, um, and so uh, we'll see about that. Uh, I think we should do a golf clap because we literally just went 11 minutes <laughs> and we got into some hockey. Golf clap for everyone. Man, listen. Hey, the, hey, the one thing I would say before we, we switch over, for anyone who isn't the biggest hockey fan, you know, myself, um, Omar, of course, that <laughs> you know, into this, at least I'll speak on the Caps-Penguin series because that's the only uh, hockey games I've ever watched from start to finish is this is the epitome of someone getting over the hump in sports what? like when when Jordan beat the Pistons or you know when Peyton finally beat Tom Brady or when Tiger Woods finally dated a black chick like this is oh my god that, did that ever happen hey we can't prove that it didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> hey which game is tomorrow tomorrow's yeah, game we've got two games them. we've yeah. got uh Washington and Pittsburgh mm-hmm. watch that and then we also will have 
Anaheim Ducks, Edmonton Oilers, which I mean is here in Anaheim. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a, a, a concerted effort. Yes, tomorrow's winners will be in the cup. Oh, you're making a prediction. <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought you were gonna say you're making a concerted <laughs> effort to watch. watch. To watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he'd rather he'd rather commit to uh, to that yeah. than watching it. You should also well, you definitely should check out the Nashville Predators when the next round starts. Check out mm-hmm. the Nashville. Very good defense. Defense wins championships, and we've got some color <laughs> in hockey. <laughs> and TV. on that note, we're out of here. <laughs> 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 Congratulations, thank, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> thank the Lord for the small favors. Five, five Negroes just had a whole discussion about hockey. Um, so on that note, let's let's go ahead and Four get into Negroes. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Okay, we we moving on. I just meant I didn't he, partake he, into it. God oh. dang. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't so, even throwing shots. <laughs> we, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and move on to black and blue. Black versus blue. <laughs> uh so <laughs> So uh, this past Saturday night, we witnessed one of the most disappointing super fights ever. And I paid for that shit. To basically, uh, yikes! Basically, it was just a show to sh- uh, to set up a, a fight that we all actually really do want to see. Um, Canelo versus Triple G is finally in the books. So if you're not into boxing, it was 50, it's fifty percent so far. Yeah. Because two weeks ago it was great. Yeah. And then now we had this shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's the fight we've all been waiting for. But Chavez. <laughs> As we called him Saturday, <laughs> shout out to uh, Young Guns too. <laughs> didn't show up. Um, no, he showed up. He, he, yeah, he did. He, got he showed up. He made weight. He was a professional. <laughs> so <laughs> cast a check. Late <laughs> so. I-, I wanted to pose this as hit or flop, but I, th- I think it's more than that. Was this a farce or nah? <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. me, this seemed like some bullshit. And Y'all Omar- ought to be ashamed of yourselves for this shit. For even really, really, you should be ashamed of yourselves because it's. Canelo did exactly what Floyd has done for a decade. He he dismantled somebody and made it look easy. And as soon as that happened, y'all want to say it's a farce. Y'all never said that about Floyd. Never. I'm, the I'm, man is hey, good. No, he is very good. But I saw Canelo on the ropes, not doing anything, and Chavez not doing what he normally does. He did not throw I've seen, punches. Seen same shit happen to Floyd. I've seen that when when Floyd has systematically broke somebody down, and then he's like, all right, you're not doing it, and I'm going to sit back on the ropes, and then they don't know what to do. The thing that didn't feel right for me, and I said it Saturday, and I'll, I'll say it again. I mean, I have no—I'm not taking anything away from Canelo. And, yes, it's—I no. mean, it was clear. It, Chavez said himself, Chavez said himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said himself, and then Nacho Berstein confirmed it as well. He didn't want to throw a lot of punches because he was afraid of the counter that would come back. So, and that happens. We definitely know that happens. Like, sometimes fighters won't engage because they think that a, a the, that their opponent, they can take their punches. And then they get in there with him, which is, to use the Floyd Mayweather example, that happened a lot. Where, oh, you feel Mayweather's straight jab, mm-hmm. and you, you realize it's some steam on there. And it's, that's just a jab. And that's just a jab. So, mm-hmm. I, I'm with that. Where it got funny for me was that WWE action that was happening. After the fight. After which the they fight. got from Floyd, too. Like, this is all his imprint, which we never complained about. That's all I'm saying. He's we never, might not. He's never, never Floyd's never. That. I've never seen yeah. Floyd have his they, opponent did, come into the ring. They, all they did was build the fight. They That's had a they montage been Floyd ready. Has they been, had it ready. They had tri- it cut and clipped. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> Triple so G had not, makeup on. So did not Bernard <laughs> Hopkins get in the ring with De La Hoya? Yeah, but Bernard... After he <laughs> lost that fight? Yeah, that happened. But he so didn't walk the, down the, the ring you know to why? Seven Nation you know Army. <laughs> because the fight was already signed. They've signed a the fight. We just didn't know it yet. And why and do you sign a fight if you don't, if you and know. And if the fight, but that's Hopkins, the fight's going on. Bernard Hopkins, De La Hoya fight was already, was, was already, deal was already done no. before he won. Go back and watch B-Hop. He was scared. Yes, yeah. he was because scared he the he money lose. goes yes. away if De La Hoya lost. Just like the same thing with Triple G. The money goes away if Canelo loses. And we can't have the money go away. And here's the only thing that I want to put out there in response to that. <sighs> And I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm ask you. I, 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 I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask you this, Omar. I'm going to ask you this. Do you think Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is a three million dollar fighter? Yes or no? No. Okay. That was the amount of money that he got. <laughs> so I'm saying they threw an extra million on there. I'm not really saying it. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> propositioning. Out there in the universe. They this put, is, get out of here. <laughs> Come they, on, man. They put an extra. They put extra two millions on it. Oh, the only way this is even credible is if you go back and watch every other Floyd fight and say it's all bullshit because that's what it looked like to me. He he got systematically beat. Nah, because he you, was. You could see people trying and realizing they couldn't do shit. I didn't see Chavez Chavez try. 
That that that's all I'm saying. So well, <laughs> I, what I saw was a uh, uh, um um Nacho come up with a bad plan and it was horrible. Trying to get that man to to box, which he, that's not what he do. That was definitely he didn't want to box yeah. though. Yeah, but that was Nacho's <laughs> he, he plan. Didn't, he didn't look like he tried to box. Yeah. He didn't box because that's not what he do. Well, he didn't do shit. Yeah, that's what he, he didn't did. Listen do. to Nacho. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so. And you kind of alluded to this in one of your confirmation bias. Uh, with how bad the NBA playoffs have been going, um, it's been terrible to watch. Bad basketball. It appears we're definitely headed for a third straight Golden State Warriors versus Cleveland, Cav- Cleveland Cavaliers finals. With all the shit that's been going on, will this actually save the playoffs, this matchup? Um, and is this, hope, this is hope or hype, right? This is uh, hope or hype, yes. So, in my opinion, it's only hype unless two things happen. Um, number one, LeBron James and Kevin Durant, Durant need to channel Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas and kiss each other <laughs> before each before each tip off. Um, and well, and and we there, saw and, how that turned out. And there, twenty years later, hey, and there's a pair, and there's a. <laughs> And there's a parallel. I'm just going to ignore what he said, and, and you should too. He's, there's a parallel there because Cleveland and Golden State are the first team since the 89 Pistons and 89 Lakers to start off 8-0 uh, in a playoff run. So the first thing is they need to kiss each other on the cheek. And this is since this is 2017, they can, they can move it to the lips. That's number one. Number two, wow. number two, the second thing is, and I'm serious about this one, if Kevin Durant and LeBron James say, you know what, I got him. From the opening tip Rudy all the way the through from the root, I got him. That's how this, this year's playoffs will be saved. If it's anything else, if it's, oh, I'm going to hide out and guard somebody else, or I'll guard him for a few possessions here and there, it's a, it doesn't matter. It's so going to be a complete playoffs bust. this playoffs is going to be a bust then. Kev? I'll... I'm gonna. I'll disagree just by saying I'm hopeful that that <laughs> finals matchup saves these NBA playoffs because for the first time in my life I've watched as many NBA playoff games as I have NHL playoff games. Wow. Mm. Well, yeah, and, and I'm, from start to finish, I mean. Um, but I mean, it's a matchup between it's the two teams everybody wants to see, and I, I I believe that this is the first time that two teams have met in the finals three years in a row. It will be. It will be. So it's it's the matchup everybody wants to see. No one can really handicap it unless you do your Kenyon teases. But I think that'll be a <laughs> matchup worth uh, the playoffs we've been watching. I mean, we, we've been saying all year it's a three team league, and then somebody from the third team got hurt, and yeah, now we have this. Now we have this, which is a damn shame. Rest in peace, playoff basketball. Is somebody <laughs> someone someone asked this earlier? I think it was Les. Does anyone does Cleveland or Golden State even lose a game in the conference finals? Yeah, well, it play. looks like Golden State may be playing San Antonio as they've just taken uh, the series lead. So maybe the Spurs get them one or two but if they win the series, but I think that's it. Cleveland won't lose. I think maybe one apiece. That's my thought. I think, I think one apiece. I, think, I feel like Washington is going to beat the Celtics because fuck the Celtics. And, uh, <laughs> so I think they can get one from – I mean, they won't be able to contain John Wall for four straight games. Yeah, he gets off once. Yeah, I get that. It may not matter though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because the way they're the way they're playing now is just above everybody else. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's that's very true. They they look pretty good. Um, now, recently it was uh, previewed over the weekend uh, in one of those terrible games in the evening. Uh, Charles Barkley series on TNT regarding race in America. Um, it it debuted. Uh, uh supposedly it's supposed to be like a, a mini series of right. four hour. And they, they uh, played the first hour, which actually is in Baltimore, um, discussing the race issue, uh, issues, Freddie Gray. Um, and we're kind of close to this, Kev, uh, for a multitude of reasons. Um, so I want to kick it to you because I know you dove into it and we talked about it. Is this newsworthy or not? Or uh, nothing to see here? Um, only in a sense that it's, it's a merger with, you know, when sports meets politics and culture and current events. So I, I give it to it to TNT and say, yeah, it's, it's newsworthy. Um, of course, I watched it. Uh, we're only one episode in. And uh, with me being so close to the situation, you know, here in Baltimore, I think that TNT had good intentions. But I think Charles Barkley did a disservice to providing a new perspective on this topic because he played into respectability politics. I mean, you, you can't look 
Tyrone West's mother in the eye and say, we need to do better, or that, hey, remember, police have a tough job. Like, I, I think that was a little off base. Right. Um, and, and I think maybe, like, Charles's way of thinking may progress throughout the series, um, which I think is important because, you know, that could be the whole point of it. But at the end of the day, I, man, it just showed how off touch he is. And let's just say Charles won't be going to any Ravens games in the foreseeable future. <laughs> Do you really think Charles Barkley is going to change the way he thinks in the next four weeks? Absolutely not. He oh. still says one statement and then repeats it for the hour and a half. I refuse, <laughs> I refuse to participate in that fuckery. I am not supporting <laughs> anything with Charles Barkley talking about race. That shit right there was a non-starter. Like, TNT ought to be ashamed of themselves. I think, you know, I think a part of the problem, and, and it's just, it's, it's, it's been crystallized just in Kevin's comments and in what just Omar just said, is that you guys are talking about Charles Barkley instead of talking about race. And I think that part of the problem, while it is well-intentioned, you're right, Kevin, that Charles Barkley is trying to actually start a conversation and a dialogue, Charles Barkley should not be the center of attention. Uh, that's number one. Then secondly, when you talk about race in America, you're not going to be able to get to any real consequential issues or any real concrete dialogue in four hours. And so I think on TNT's part or, or whoever, I think the idea to have a conversation about race is important. I think having a luminary to lead that discussion is also important. I don't think Charles Barkley is the right person. But then also this is something that needs to happen on a continuum. And so in four hours, you're just not going to get the whole scope. And my thing is Charles Barkley, it was not his idea. Kevin, nobody said it's not his idea. Somebody was like, "Wait a second, Ernie. let's have a show. <laughs> let's have a show. Talk about race and put Charles Barkley in it, and it'll be it'll get people to watch." And that's the problem I have. Ernie's the spook that sat by the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, guys, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Our "Is You With It or Nah?" debate segment, where tonight we have Junior Blue repping the West Side against the best point guard to ever play at Lock Raven High School, Ambassador Dad. Yep. Um, and our topic tonight is, should Major League Baseball and the National Hockey League ban their unwritten rules, uh, specifically throwing at batters uh, and the fighting that takes place on the ice? Um, so let's see. Less. Call this for you, my brother. Heads or tails? Call it in the air. Tails. It is heads, heads. So, Devin, you get to choose which end of this argument you want to take. I'm going to take ban. Devin wants to ban. Okay, Les, you want to go first or last? Devin can go first. Mm, you ain't first Devin. or last. All right. All right. Who got Through the timer? The I, got the, I got the timer. Devin, ready, set, go. Now, Regarding this, uh, hockey's unwritten rules are actually pretty good and uh, honorable. They're centered mostly around safety and honor. Uh, they actually play with blades on their fucking feet and sticks in their hands. And fighting is a major part of the sport. Um, they have honor in fighting. There's no hitting anyone while they're down. There's no sucker punches. And there's no turtling, which is you can't start a fight and then cover up like a little bitch. You got to man up. That is completely unlike anything from Major League Baseball. Uh, this sport is so superstitious and old, it's no wonder why there are no uh, young fans joining the sport. 50% uh, of their fan base is 55 or older. 70% are male, and 83% are white. Uh, compare that to the NFL, 55% of the demo is 37. Uh, uh, 55 and up is only 37%. And the NBA has 62% of their uh, fans between 18 and 54 so every, they're a lot younger. We're in a YouTube social media era where highlights and gifts rule the day. Kids and young adults have a super short attention span, and everyone can be a star on social media just by posting live. So not being able to celebrate a bat flip uh, or admire a home run, when hitting a baseball is actually the hardest thing to do in sports, uh, you will lose the kids' attention. Um, not to mention the safety issues that go along with hitting batters, specifically the last two weeks we've seen with the Orioles in the Red Sox, uh, somebody's going to get fucked up, um, probably on Boston. Or somebody's going to get hurt, they're going to lose their star player. Um, the sport has uh, longly ignored diversity as a whole. Um, and some of these unwritten rules sometimes suppress uh, the kid part of the game, which is fun, 
and this is specific, specifically for the Latin players, um, they have a different type of game. Um, professional athletes do something very uh, small percentage of the population do. So let them live. Ban that shit. Let them play. Junior Blue. All so right. You. Now, let's say, don't get rid of the bans. Why should you? Let's look at this. Baseball and NHL both have long histories with their unwritten rules. Um, in baseball, they talk about don't do backflips. Well, guess what? That's considered showing up the other team. And guess what? That gets the ball thrown at you by the pitcher. Now, over the Baltimore Orioles and the Red Sox had their beef over the last couple weeks. And from that, you had suspensions. You had players ejected from the game. Why, in the middle of April, did I care about a Orioles-Red Sox series? If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have cared. We wouldn't have talked about it on the show. We've talked about the sinking ratings for um, baseball this whole time. So this is something that actually got people excited about baseball in April. Um, NHL, there's, as Devin alluded to, there is actually a written rule about fighting. Their unwritten rules are what keeps it safe, I guess you could say. So why would you ever want to ban those rules? Um, you just look at the past. You look at different things that's happened in, in baseball. You look at Don Zimmer getting hit by Pedro Martinez. Those things, you look back and you remember those things. These are the unwritten rules in baseball that they live by. Now, you watch as the, the ratings go up as people do things. You talk about the social media era. Well, guess what? When people do back, bat flips and people get thrown at, what happens? Memes are created. It's spread totally through social media. Why is that? Because that is the unwritten rules that have been broken and then they get enforced. And that's what that's what really is driving baseball because nobody else wants to see it. Do I have to judge this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, man. If you show up somebody, you're getting thrown at. I'm throwing at the back of your head. Show me up. I dare you. I dare you, whether it's a rule or not. They're going to have to throw me out the game. With that said, with that said, <laughs> I'm giving it to Devin. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Be, you, you're giving it to Devin because? Because I agree with him. I was just messing with Les. <laughs> I ain't going to never be a pitcher. <laughs> or, or a hitter. <laughs> it don't matter. Oh, God. Uh, but for real, though, somebody's going to get fucked up. Oh, yeah. Somebody's going to get hurt. I mean, because they let that shit linger for too many series. Throwing at my man's head. <laughs> too many series? Too many years. Too, thank you. I'm talking about, I'm talking about now. <laughs> I'm talking about in the present day. Yeah, well. Orioles, Red Sox. Just don't. I don't agree with 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 uh with the unwritten rules of baseball. I don't know about hockey. I just know it's stupid to me. The like, the, <laughs> the funny thing about hockey, like you said, the written rule allows the fighting. The unwritten rule protects is them. yeah, it protects them. You take off your helmet, you take off your gloves, you take off, so you drop backwards. the sticks, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. drop the sticks, you do stuff like that. The so turtle, the turtling shit that I that found was funny. out. That's that was hilarious. Funny. Like <laughs> you can't instigate and then cover up yeah. like a little hoe. Right. Exactly. You let it. You let it. Yeah. It, it it hurts the game to me. Okay. <laughs> They're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Diplomatic immunity. No questions. <laughs> <laughs> so what's ne where do we go from here? On that note, we're going to leave. We're going to end this show as fast as fucking possible. We thank you for visiting Confirmation Bias. Uh, please follow us everywhere in social media at The League AM. Visit our website, theleagueam.com. Uh, liking is cool, but sharing is caring. We'll see you Thursday uh, as we conclude our soccer segment. Hey, two game sevens tomorrow. Yes, sir. Go, Go Cavs. Cavs.